When it comes to RVing, I love the fall time to get out and RV, but I wanted to install a new heater on the RV and I've been wanting to do this for years. And so I wanted to be able to test it out. And after doing some tests and running it, I am really surprised at how it performed. How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we're going to be talking about the heat pump AC that we just installed on the RV and how much heat it's providing for us at this time after running a few tests. Now I've been keeping my eye out for RV AC technology and when we were in Texas at the NRVTA I was talking to Todd letting him know that I was waiting for something to kind of get excited about and he said hey you should check out the Rec Pro AC and so he went and showed me one on one of his trailers and I was surprised by the performance in the heat at that time and it was the low profile one so we wanted to install one on our RV and see how it did and I've always been wanting to install an AC on the RV that has a heat pump because you can get some heat out of it and it gives you an additional option for being able to heat the inside of the RV. So it's being able to cool the RV in the summertime and heat the RV in the wintertime or the cooler temperatures. So to start off, if you don't know what a heat pump is, is it's basically your AC in reverse. So in the summertime, you're gonna be trying to take that heat inside the RV and transfer it to the outside using the, the Freon or Puron that's inside of that AC unit to not get too technical. And then in the wintertime, as it has a way to be able to flip that around. And so you're absorbing the heat from the outside and you're gonna be bringing that into the inside. So it's more of a, a heat transfer rather than just a, a heating element. So that's how a heat pump is, is working. So not every AC out there is set up to be a heat pump and some of them are. So this is the heat pump version from the Rec Pro AC. And this is the 15,000 BTU unit and they also have a low profile one that has the heat pump built into it as well. Now before I talk about my initial impression and the use of this AC in general, let's stick with the heat pump option for now. So usually in our RV, the three heat sources that we're gonna have is the furnace, we're going to have our electric fireplace, place and now we have the heat pump on the RV. And I think the heat pump really shines in the spring and the fall when those temperatures are getting cooler but they're not freezing outside. So when it gets freezing and I'm worried about the, the pipes freezing up, I'm going to use the furnace because that heats the areas that I might have plumbing and I wanna protect the plumbing so that I don't burst any pipes. The heat pump isn't gonna do that for me and it's not as efficient when it starts dropping below freezing. But the thing about the heat pump is it gives you another source of how you want to heat the RV. So we're gonna be using electric with the heat pump. With the furnace, you're gonna be using propane. So if you don't wanna burn as much propane, you can use the heat pump. And we also have the electric fireplace in here. So if you wanna compare the amount of power that it's using for how much heat you're getting out of it, I ran those numbers this morning to see what we were actually getting out of the heat pump compared to the electric fireplace. So the fireplace is rated at 1500 watts, that's how much power it's going to be using, and the BTUs that it's gonna give us is 5300. Compared to the heat pump, it's gonna be drawing less power than that, but it's rated at 15,000 BTUs. So that's a big difference in BTUs, how much heat you're gonna get out of each of them. So I ran the fireplace for a half hour, and the power watchdog said that we pulled 0.8 kilowatt hours, so that's 800 watt hours, and we changed the temperature inside the main living area here, 2.3 degrees. And that fireplace is just heating the main living area here. So then I ran at the same temperature on the outside, the heat pump, and the power watchdog said that we pulled 0.7 kilowatt hours. So pretty close to about the same. So around 700 watt hours of power that we used and it brought the temperature up inside of the RV 4.7 degrees. And so that was across the entire RV because it's ducted throughout the entire RV. So it wasn't just localized to this one room. So I tried to keep everything as similar as I could for each of these tests and it was about 43 to 44 degrees outside when I did this test. So it's about optimal for when you're gonna be wanting to use the heat pump. Now the other thing about the heat pump is the noise. So the fireplace is probably going to be the quietest out of the three of these options that we're kind of looking at today. The heat pump would be in the middle and the furnace for us is going to be the loudest. The, the heat pump is, is really not that loud, but you can hear that compressor kicking on. Okay, starting off with the fireplace. Helps if I get the temp high enough. Okay, now here is for the heat pump. Okay, now for the furnace.
So that should give you an idea of the sound between the three of them. I am gonna hold off doing a, a full review of this AC. We did have one hot day or a couple hot days where we've used the AC and it's done well. It has a remote so you don't have to worry about wiring in a thermostat somewhere. You have this to be able to control the AC unit. Uh, but the heat pump and the AC, I was impressed with what I saw when I, we were in Texas and Todd showed me that unit. We haven't gone with a mini split yet because the form factor doesn't really work for us. I'm not a huge fan of putting it on the back bumper uh, and trying to find a different spot for us with a mini split on this RV is a little bit more difficult. So we wanted to go with something that had a heat pump and gave us the option to be able to heat with electricity a little bit more efficient. One other thing to note, as I saw the other morning, is it has a defrost mode. So if it freezes up, it's a really cold morning, and you're using that heat pump, it'll go into a defrost mode before it starts using the heat pump again to bring the, the heat in. One other thing is I'll put a link down in the description to this AC heat pump and the low profile one. I have a code that you can save a little bit if you're buying that from RecPro, or they have it on Amazon too, but you can save a few bucks if you go directly through RecPro. So in a nutshell, looking at the numbers, the heat pump is a great option if you're looking for an electric heat source to heat the inside of your RV, depending on the outside temperature. So compared to the electric fireplace, we're gonna get a lot more heat out of the heat pump in a shorter amount of time throughout the entire RV uh, than we would through the electric fireplace. So we have those three options for now. If it's cold outside and we wanna just warm up the inside and it's not freezing temperatures where we're worried about the plumbing, the heat pump is gonna be a, a great option. Otherwise, we're gonna switch over to the ferns to protect the, the plumbing and the pipes inside of the RV. And if we just wanna heat up the main living area or enjoy those nice, fake flames on the, the fireplace, we can use that, warm up the room, and have a little heat on the inside. So all three are actually a great option depending on what you're wanting to do at that time. So I hope this information helps you guys out to see when it's good to use a heat pump, when it's good to switch over to the furnace, and the efficiency of the heat pump. So I think that's going to do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.